to tonight's Lone Liberal Rumble. Joining me out in Bitely and Tim Cavanaugh. Let's get back to it. A study by researchers at the UC San Francisco has revealed that people who have access to guns have an increased risk of both suicide and homicide. I mean, the, the, in fact, people with access to guns are two times more likely to commit suicide or be killed. That's 100% more likely. Every year, 31,000 deaths between suicides and homicides by guns. 51.8% uh, of suicides are gun related, 66.5% uh, of homicides in the United States. Um, when Australia after this, the 1996 slaughter in Tasmania, and Australia said, okay, that's it, we're horrified by this. They actually showed the pictures of the victims on national television. And John Howard, George W. Bush's good buddy, the conservative prime minister, the very, to the right of the Republican Party prime minister, said, enough. The states, as they, as they decreased the number of guns in the states, Tasmania was the first. They did the biggest gun buyback, and then, you know, it went all across the country. Suicide rates and homicide rates decreased in each one of those states following the gun buyback programs. So it was absolute relationship, and to this day it is held. This, should we not say, actually, let me take it a step beyond that. Should we not say that because the Second Amendment is archaic, Right? We, we, we said slavery was archaic, right? It was from as another era. First. As we long left... as you'll concede that the first is also archaic. No, I won't. I, I, I think the first <laughs> the applies today. The didn't exist when we they wrote the first amendment. We still have newspapers. Um, but we don't have slavery. And the Second Amendment was passed to protect slavery. You, you, I'm no, sure no. you know. The, the Virginia was... Ratifying Convention, the Virginians were the guys who were demanding that there be a Bill of Rights attached. Tom, that was, that was the... Tom, that is absolutely absurd. Yeah, everybody wanted Slaves guns Slaves didn't there. have guns. guns. If they had had guns, guns, had they been allowed to exercise the Second Amendment right, perhaps slavery wouldn't have existed. Let me explain. That Michael in the, DeLeo, in the he fashion his career that it did. over claiming that New let, Englanders didn't let, want guns. Let me guns 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 this laws very kept no, slaves just, from having let me, arms. Let me make my point, and you can, I'll give you all the time you want to come back. Okay? All right. So it was the Virginians who said, we've got to have a Bill of Rights. And it was the Virginians, uh, specifically right. Patrick Henry and George Mason, who said, the we have to have the, the Second Amendment. Exactly. OK. Here, it, and, and, and Patrick Henry's concern was that Article I of the Constitution, Article I, Section 8, gives Congress the power to authorize the military and pay for the military. And Article II gives the president the power to call up the military exclusively. And here, this is from the Virginia Ratifying Convention, 1788, Virginia, uh, Patrick Henry's speech. He said, will they not search that, he starts out, he says, among 10,000 implied powers which they may assume, they may, if we be engaged in war, liberate every one of your slaves if they please. In this state, there are 236,000 blacks and there are many in several other states. May Congress not say that every black man must fight? Did we not see a little of this in the last war, the Revolutionary War? And in fact, they did. They said, if you're a slave, right. you know, you they fight, did. you get freed. We were not so hard pushed as to make emancipation general, but acts of assembly passed that every slave who would go to the army would be free. They will search that paper. Wait, he's talking, that, what's he talking about? The British Army or the American? The American Army. We had. We had every no, slave went in the British Army did get freed. Uh, and that, and then, it happened also with George Washington. There were there, 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 the there, right there, there were two. There were a couple of generals who offered Southern states. It, it wasn't right. Washington. It was mm -hmm. another. Uh, I forgot his name. Anyway, he says, they will search that paper. He's referring to the Constitution. This is where he's arguing for the Second Amendment. They will search that paper and see if they have the power of manumission to free slaves. And have they not, sir? Have they not power to provide for the general defense and welfare? And may they not think that these call for the abolition of slavery? May they not pronounce all slaves free? Will they not be warranted by that power? In this situation, I see a great deal of the property of the people of Virginia in jeopardy. That would be the slaves. But it is, is it practicable by any human means to liberate them without producing the most dreadful and ruinous consequences? Keep in mind, Patrick Henry was the largest slave owner in the state of Virginia. Okay. There's his speech. Right. So isn't it time to say the Second Amendment is there? That's why it says a well-regulated militia being essentially necessary to the security of a free state. The state militias right. were called slave patrols in the southern states. It doesn't say a free nation. Yep. And they practiced gun control to keep arms away right. from slaves. Right, they and keep them in the hands of the militia. Part, they the kept militias. a part of the population yeah, there was lots of, unarmed. There was lots of I know. Yeah, I mean, there's always That's what I'm saying. For a very negative purpose. You're right. Why would you want to give away? One at, one at a time. However, all right. One at a time. Why would you want to give away a right to protect yourself from falling into the exact same trap that we saw our forefathers deal with, which is the problem of slavery? About? Why would you, why would you, want to give away your protection, your right, 
I don't think that you I have, have a, I don't think that I have a to defend fear yourself. of slavery. Yeah, you well, right, I mean, because you can have a gun. Because I mean, slavery is no longer an institution yourself. in the United States. You outside say outside of Walmart. Because you have the right of free speech, you have the right to a gun, you have the right not to have troops quartered in your home without your consent or in peacetime, uh, and you have a right against self-incrimination and so on and so forth. And in fact, you supposedly have all other rights that are not specifically enumerated in the Constitution. I don't know how that works yeah, out. Want, but, uh, rights that were denied right. slaves. Right. So uh, what's, My point. what's the problem? We, the, the Second Amendment was written so that the, it says for the free state. They wanted to make sure that the federal government, well, Patrick that the, Henry Constitution, the Constitution, that right? the, Patrick Henry they was, wanted to was make on sure the side that, the federal that actually government nobody talked about. Free the they wanted to stay on the order. There were the northerners who controlled part the, of the federal government. These people have been written out of history, the first six years of our country, basically. The first six, year, six peacetime years of our country we're under this thing that the, the all, you, all you get is one about sentence. about the Articles of Confederation. Yeah, you get one sentence in your high school textbook that tells you that's a big failure, it's an economic collapse. Right, but isn't it time to crap. say it was massive economic there is, expansion? We no longer have a time. well. We no longer have a well-regulated militia, which is how Patrick Henry refers to the slave patrols. We no longer have a well-regulated militia, so it's not necessary for the security of a free state. In other words, to keep to keep let's, a slave state a slave sleep, state, then. and therefore the right of the people to keep and bear arms well, and right right can be a friend. What we have right there is something that's short and sweet and it's part of our law all right? and, I don't it's, know and, it's a, and it's a vestige of slavery right here i'm not sure what this outcry is over right. what's wrong with owning a gun tell me right now what is wrong with private citizens if, law abiding citizens I'll, owning a gun I'll, I'll tell you very simply first of all speaking as speaking as speaking as some well, yeah, 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 question. speaking yeah. as somebody who's a sports shooter i you know i use guns I, i'm familiar with guns i'm what do you hunt? i'm a fan of guns what do you hunt i don't hunt i i hunt targets Okay. And skeet, I've shot skeet. Okay, okay. They, they, you know, you know, they don't yell. Skeet are very dangerous. Right. Yes. <laughs> They're great fun, actually. But you know, what I would say is that what we know is that homicide and suicide, at least a significant percentage of the time, probably in the neighborhood of 30 to 50 percent of the time, are acts of impulse. And if you have a deadly weapon at hand, like a you, sword or a gun. Yeah. Right. Or a knife. Yeah. Or pills yeah. or poisons. And, I and, and, and right what happened suicide. in Australia is I believe that, a right to commit suicide is one of your unenumerated rights. So if a handgun makes it easier, I'm not going to hold that against you. But see, that's, that's the problem. The handgun does make it easier. And most right. of the time when people are, are and, trying to commit suicide, that, they're not actually trying to commit suicide. They're yelling for help. Right. Well, and the so they take an overdose of pills. No, yeah, you know, no, no. Just you know, the, the hour before their spouse gets home. Or they take you know, whatever it is. And, and, and what, what they found in Australia is that when they got rid of the guns, Suicide rate dropped significantly. Right. Tom, let's back up. Yeah, as well as I, I, listen, there. after this... Thunderdome, I tuned out of Australia. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll move on. Uh, public unions. Yesterday, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments in Harris v. Quinn. And basically, you know, this is supposed to be, this, ar the, this uh, Supreme Court case was supposed to be about whether or not these home health care workers, people who go into people's homes and, and work, who are represented by a union and paid by the state, whether they are state employees because they're paid by the state or whether they're independent contractors because they get to determine the times and places of their work, right, and hours of their work. But that's really not what got argued before the Supreme Court. As you both know, what really got argued before the Supreme Court was whether or not public employees, employees, people who are being paid by government should have the right to unionize. And that's what the court is going to rule on, just like with Citizens United. You know, it was supposed to be about, right. about uh, McCain-Feingold and it turned out being, being about something altogether different. Well, it's about compulsory unionization of public workers in a very specific instance in cases where in this state uh, you're if you're a relative caregiver this was the case that was brought you might be required but the, but, well that yeah but that if was, you read okay, the, we'll if you read let's, the debate let's pay attention to the specifics of the case well, because that's I, an actual american standing up for his or her actual american rights these are people saying we shouldn't be forced to join this union because I'm taking care of my uncle. I shouldn't need to join an uncle uh, a union. Well, I actually read the debate, right? I actually read the, the, the it's only 90 pages, you know, the, the pleadings in, in the court yesterday. Right. I read a whole bunch of it on the air yesterday. And the, the attorney for this anti-union group that, that found Ms. Harris and brought this thing forward was saying essentially, in fact, was asked, uh, you know, right up front, are you saying that, you know, public unions should not exist, that, that public employees shouldn't have the right to unionize? And he was essentially saying, yes, that's what I'm saying. We're well, trying to end public that's unions. That's a totally legitimate argument. I mean, that was, the, that was the argument until the 60s, right? That was basically what America thought. Ike didn't believe that the military should be able to unionize. He didn't think that, uh, you know, those guys even had very broad definitions. The they were trying to force people back. And they were trying to force coal workers back to strike, uh, back to work on the basis that this is a necessary national. I know, and we and we had. And here's, here's it was a, a really dark big period. It was a dark lot. period of American mm -hmm. history. We don't want to go back there. A, a big problem. So with we want to keep public employee unions. 
No, no, no. We want to we want to get rid of them. They 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 grew up in that period. They're a they're a fungus that grew in that so, period. So they, they workers. Workers should not be able to public, organize public in the workplace. No, well. A union should never exist to be the... when it can do the following thing. First, they get public employees on board. Yeah. So they, have the, they represent the employees inside of the government. They then turn around and campaign for the people that will be the, the yeah. manage that system. Look, every year so the when union dollar loses value, funds the campaign. Public employees get 100% of that lost value. I understand. And, and, and that's absurd. And, and, and that's, well, that's wait a the, minute. You're, you're right. You're right. I acknowledge great, that. Great. The union can fund a campaign and, and basically pick their employer. So, but on the other hand, the Koch brothers can say, you know, okay, we've got this, this factory and we want to have these regulations. They the can, Koch brothers they can would fund. be lurking. No, no. I knew they were somewhere. <laughs> what is the flip side of this? It, yeah, I'm, I'm saying if the you want to take, if you want to, a minimal if, if you're, fraction. The argument that you're making is a, an anti-citizens united argument. The argument that you're making is about money and politics. And if you're no, going to no. make an argument about money and politics, I'm with you. I'm, sa I'm saying, let's say money is not protected under the First Amendment. It is not, it, it is property, no, it is no, not No, no, I'm speech. saying money is protected. Okay. Yeah, so money helps if, you get your if, message if out If there. money is protected, then why is a the union's money business. not protected? What's that? Then why is a union's money not protected? It is. They're free to spend their money. They're just not forced to force but people you wanna, to spend their money. But you want to change not, that. You want to say that no, a union not, shouldn't be able no, to support you're, 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 Again, you're going beyond the specifics of this case. This As case is will about, the court. I'll can bet you. Can you force me when I, I Ten you know, cents, you know? I'm not sure I have that many family members I really feel like taken care of. But if, God forbid, that should come to pass, I would not want to have to join a union to do it. That's what this case is about. But it's not what. And the I case. do have family members I would gladly give do, caregiver service. Are, are you not acknowledging that that, that, that that there's a real probability that the Supreme Court is going to take this a lot bigger than just whether or not these people are? are well, it's definitely possible. It's know, possible in any case. Independent that comes contractors. Up. Do they have a long history of that? I mean, they, they yeah, can't this court pretty does. Narrowly. Pretty narrowly, really. Citizens they United was narrow. I mean, they blew up a hundred <laughs> years of stare decisis. Here's, here's the problem. Going all the way back to yeah. 1907 and the Tillman yeah. Act. I mean, it, it's, it's I, okay. You know, they, they tried to change things as little as possible, even in the Kelo decision, which I think is the worst Supreme Court decision of my okay. adulthood. Well,